there as we get into this Neil Long, you know, has been dealing with a lot from social media, everybody coming after her after what happened with her, you know, fiance and all of the problems that ensued after the fact. Now, what we're going to do is do what should have been done from the very beginning. <clears throat> Address some of these people who have been out here just for their own liberty, creating narratives from what is toxic masculinity versus real masculinity. Okay? That's one thing we're missing here. Um, and I want you to understand that. Let's listen to Nia Long first break down the relationship situation. For themselves. Like everyone has a different understanding, a different agreement. And you have to do what works for your particular family, especially when you're both working and you have busy schedules. Women are super women, but we also have to recharge our batteries. And um, I've learned, especially in this COVID time, to really examine how I'm balancing my work home life in a different way. That was Nia Long. Yeah. Their relationship for themselves. Like everyone has a different understanding, a different agreement, and you have to do what works for your particular family, especially when you're both working and you have busy schedules. Women are super women, but we also have to recharge our batteries. Now, you see that? She was telling you all of the situations that was going on between the two at that time and her life like many others because i've known people in the industry it is very hard to move around and have a relationship what's up scrub i see you she didn't know all along she knew only days ago but we're gonna get into that um we're gonna get into that uh when we do the whole breakdown on the patreon it's already there you got the full breakdown on what happened. But he told her days before it broke. So she just found out last week. Now, people, I want to address what's toxic masculinity versus masculinity. Because I think that's the reason I made this. She's being viciously attacked by toxic masculinity. People who are blaming her for the relationship or him, Yodoka, going out cheating. She wasn't handling her business. If she wasn't trying to be a man, and she trying to be the man in the relationship. She wasn't handling that business. And he, what are he supposed to do? He gonna go out and get it. That's toxic masculinity talking. Masculinity don't talk like that. That's a toxic man. That is a man boy who don't know understand what a real man is supposed to be about. That's not masculinity. That is disguised as masculinity. That's not masculinity. Masculinity is going to say, one, a man is going to do what a man is going to do. Period. There is nobody to blame. It's all on you. You made the choice. You made the decision. You as a man made the mistake. Ain't nobody make you make a mistake. You a man. That's masculinity. There's a difference. And it is the lines are blurred because people don't understand what being a man is versus people who are boys who is of age of what should be manhood. And as a man, he made a decision. Right or wrong, he made the decision. It's not Nia Long's fault 
that he decided as a man he wanted to do that. She drove him to cheat than he isn't a man. Because a man decides what he wants to do. As a man, period. Just like a woman chooses what she wants to do with her body as a woman. No, the man made her cheat. See, you can't have it both ways. That was that was a decision that that he made with him and his dick. He decided they made the decision. <laughs> that everybody has to define their relationship for themselves. Like everyone has a different understanding, a different agreement. And you have to do what works for your particular family, especially when you're both working and you have busy schedules. Women are super women, but we also have to recharge our batteries. And um, I've learned, especially in this COVID time, to really examine how I'm balancing my work home life in a different way. And that's how she had to move because her life was all over the place. She has two sons. She has an older son from a previous relationship, and she has a 10 year old son with M.A. Udoka. So when everybody's telling her, oh, just kick him to the curb, they got a 10 year old son. So it's a lot that you have to process that you can't make a decision within a week. This is real life. And y'all are basing real life situations around sex. Relationships aren't about sex. If you think the relationship is about sex, then you're not in a relationship. Understand that. There's other rooms you're gonna have to be able to get through. So of course, M.A. Yudoka put out this statement saying, I'm sorry for putting the team through this difficult situation and I accept the team's decision out of respect from everyone's involved, I will have no further comment. He did thank his family too. So this is just a uh, part of the message that he's embarrassed his family as well. But people are blaming her saying she must have done something because as the woman she's trying to be a man and lead the relationship which drove him to cheat they're speculating <laughs> you don't know what happened in that relationship but to blame her and she said i'm asked i ask that my privacy be respected as i process the recent events all above i am a mother will continue to focus on my children she didn't say my relationship, she said her children. So her children are her first responsibility that she wants to be able to protect because she has a fiance that wasn't looking out and protecting her. They have been engaged for five years. They've been together for about 11 or 12 years. But most people who are engaged five years don't usually get married. That's just what it is. It's very rare that you see that happening. So because they weren't married, people decided to feed into conspiracy theories and say and dictate to people what the marriage is, what their relationship is. They're making that decision for them. So they're blaming me alone 
Oh, she trying to be a man, that's all. When no one can make a man do what a man don't want to do. A man makes a choice to do what he wants to do as a man. Right or wrong, it's on him. He made the call. So why would she ever be blamed as a woman? You see, and that's masculinity. <clears throat> a masculine man could tell you that because that's how we think. As men, toxic masculinity is thinking and blaming the woman for the decisions that applies to a man. And only men who think like that are not real men. They're boys, overgrown boys who refuse to grow up. So I guess you needed a man to tell you, don't listen to boys. <laughs> oh yeah, it's also a flip side to that coin because women use that against men. And it's the same way. How are you blaming a man for decisions you make as a woman? A woman will sit there and say, he cheated. So, girl, that's why I cheated, too. He was cheating first. So he did something wrong. And you decided to do something wrong, too. So does that balance the scale? If it was what he did was wrong, why would you do it? That means it was wrong when you did it. Wrong and wrong equals wrong. That's how I do math. Why would you compromise yourself? Someone else go out and steal something. I'm not going to go steal something too so we can be even. Because you don't get even. That just makes you, like them, a thief. You have to keep the energy 100% flowing. You know, people don't understand that. You have to keep the energy 100% flowing at all times. That energy is what destroys manhood from fanhood. People don't ever see or understand what goes on in the mind of somebody who's real and somebody who's fake. They never understand it. They never understand what's real and what's fake. Because they are confused by generalizations. People sit there and generalize what somebody's going through. Oh, need alone, the way she talks, she bossy. She did this, this, and that. Her authoritiveness might be what he needs. He might like that energy. Her energy of confidence, being a black woman in this business, it's very difficult. You got to be mentally strong, black and Asian or just a woman in color period in this industry is very difficult. And to be able to navigate that, and don't forget to hit the like button, people. I know you guys just got here. If you knew, I hope you guys subscribe to the page so you can understand what it is that's going on. But in celebrity couples or people who are in the industry, everyone looks at, oh, you was in this movie and this movie and that movie, you're rich. 
That's not necessarily true. In a lot of the cases, there it's not, it's damn sure not true. Do you know most black entertainers and actors that you see, they don't even make a million dollars a year? Let me repeat that to you. People you have seen on television programs and series and all these different products, you saw them in a movie, they don't even make a million dollars a year. They don't. You will be surprised, but it's the truth. You know, most of these people get for a movie, $4,000. They'll be on a reality show. You know how much they're getting paid? For the whole reality show, 5000 For the whole series, not an episode, a series. They'll get $500 an episode. Some will get $1,100 an episode. Are you kidding me? They weren't even making a million dollars. I'm not joking. I actually know. <laughs> Factually, they weren't getting money. That's why they started to complain. Some of the people like, hey, I'm making all this money for this network. Why am I not getting any money? But what do you know what they got in exchange for it? Exposure. That's how they sold them. They said, well, you're getting the exposure. This is going to open the door. You're going to be able to get all these other things that happen for you. And for black women, the opportunities are greater than it is for black men. And they said, well, why? Because for black women, they have cosmetic lines, fashion. People say they're giving them free clothes, free everything. They get paid for club appearances quicker. Oh, we want you to come to the club we're going to have this for you, free food, and it's all laid out, and you're getting guest appearances. They get that way before the men. Men don't get that. They're knocking her down because she's a woman. That's toxic masculinity. Those are punks. They're blaming her for something that didn't even have anything to do with her. But a punk would try to make it look like she did it. It ain't her fault. If you decide to cheat, that's on you. Ain't no she drove me to cheat. I had a friend that was like that where his wife set it up so that he would cheat. Her marrying him was a process. First off, they met in AA. He had a gambling addiction. She had a drinking addiction and all kinds of addictions. So they met in AA and started dating. It was a bad idea from the jump. They were each other's crutches. He lost a lot of weight, got in shape. He was in the best shape of his life. He was happy. He came to the Christmas party with his new love interest and he was focused and she got pregnant and everything was glorious. They had the baby, she wanted a new house. She kept pushing him to move out of that old house and get a new house. As Soon as he did it, it was like a month into it she just started to regress and have these mood swings. She was angry. 
And it was like she was back on the pills, back to drinking, doing that, going through depressional stages and would just wild out with insanities. And she wouldn't sleep with him anymore. So he's like, man, my wife wouldn't sleep with me anymore. She's pushing him to go out and have an affair. She's pushing him to go out and get it elsewhere. She's pushing him to get a divorce. This was a plan. She wasn't just on drugs. She was looking for some security so that she can have money coming in and you to take care of her so she can go do drugs or whatever. Now she got the baby. Now she got the new house. Now she wants a divorce. Strategy. So I was like, she might be on drugs, but she wasn't crazy. She set you up. But if he ran out and cheat, that was his decision. She didn't drive to do all that. These, all the decisions he made was his. He knew she was like a recovering drug addict. He knew that this was her life. She didn't drive him to cheat. She put the, she took away options so he had a choice. She didn't want him to go cheat. She wanted a divorce. He decided to make it worse by going out and and actually having affairs. And now when you try to go for a divorce, she could file for divorce and she'll get it off because now you're having an affair. Now, instead of saying she's crazy and doing all these different things, she's making you look like the bad person. And it's like the yin and the yang. He's the reason his affairs is the reason I'm going crazy. Now she's going to get way more than anything ever imaginable. So the daughter, he stayed in this bad marriage because he wouldn't divorce her and give her a divorce. So he just went through hell for like two extra years. So fighting this thing, the divorce even took a year. The daughter, she wanted to go with the father. She didn't want to stay with the mom. She didn't like her mom. Her mom was not a loving mom. She was loved her drugs. And as a two-year-old, she wanted to go with her father. But the court said no. She had to stay, and he didn't even fight to try to go get his daughter, you know. She used the daughter as a weapon, and he was like, all right, bet, you can have a daughter, and I'll, you know, I keep the house, and you can get you a new place. So that was that. So eventually, the mother was put into an insane asylum, once they realized she was, this was years later, and the daughter was about, I say, 12, 13. And they was like, well, you know, she's your daughter, so you had to, he went down there to see if she wanted to come live with him. And she was like, I never want to see you in my life. Said that to him, and he was like, all right, well, put her in the system. And that was it. He just let, let his daughter go, his only child. Now, it's a sad situation, but what do you tell somebody who's going through something like that? I mean, it is, it's a sad story. But as a man, he made the decisions he has to live with. So you can't blame a woman for his decisions he made. He took that chance as a man. She did wrong, but it was his decision. There were signs he ignored them because he wanted what he wanted. People told him he had other friends that was closer to him than me. They told him. He didn't want to hear it. As a man, he made those decisions. So as a man, he had to accept those decisions. Nobody can make you do anything 
you don't want to do as a man. It's up to you to make those decisions. They can insist, they can persuade, but ultimately the decision is yours as a man. That's the difference from masculinity and toxic masculinity. Toxic masculinity, they want to blame the woman. It's the woman's fault I'm not a man. You see how ignorant that sounds? It's the woman's fault I'm not a man. Do you think a woman going to say it's the man's fault I'm not a woman? Exactly, right? Do you think a woman's going to say, I'm not, I can't be a woman because he won't let me? No, a woman is a woman, period, and is going to make her decisions based on her. It's on her. The husband can have his input, but ultimately the woman's got to make her decisions as a woman. Period. It's her decision. It's her call. When I date a woman, I don't interfere. If another guy try to holler at her and say, hey, baby, what's up? And try to talk to her, I ain't saying nothing. She knows that. I'm not going to say a word. If another man try to holler at my girl, I'm not going to say nothing because a man ain't supposed to say nothing right there. That's not for a man to do. How many of y'all know that? I've seen a lot of men not make this, not follow this rule. I'll tell you that right now. Do you know that's not for you to do? That's for your woman to tell that man. No. I got a man. I'm with him. Now, if they persist, and continue after she's told them no, then that's when you come in. That's when you come into the picture. When she says no, and you don't understand no, now the man has to step up and say, okay, she told you no, now I'm telling you, do you wanna die? Because that's it. Now, that's where people get it wrong all the time and it causes problems the man over jumps the boundaries of what he's supposed to do so he never knows if the woman is really true or not if a woman comes at me my girl she already knows don't say a word it's my job to tell that girl i'm with somebody that's my girl no blah blah, blah. if she insists then you know, my girl going to step up and do what she do and go crazy. That's the way it works. That's how it's supposed to work. The problem is most men, if a girl holler at them, they going to try to have their cake and eat it too. They don't tell that girl, yo, I got a girl, I ain't doing this. The girl be, oh, okay, well, I thought we could just kick it on the side, do we? All right, I'm going to get me another phone, and I'll call you on that phone. <laughs> you see, guys try to have both, about both worlds. The most of us, we try to balance it out. So... A woman makes her own decision. What's this toxic femininity or whatever the feminality? What is that? It's blaming a man for you not being a woman. That's toxic. Femininity. Right? That's, that's what that is. Blaming a man for you not being able to be a woman. That's toxic. Blaming the man. 
Well, I can't even really live because the man, he should have been doing it. And the man, well, I'll be, she made the decision. As a woman, what is stopping her from making the decision? Nothing. She chose. So don't say, I'm, I went to the club because, shoot, he ain't doing what he's supposed to do, shoot. I'm going to go out and do me. That's what you did. You went out to do you. Don't blame the man for doing that. You made that choice to do it on your own. A real woman owns up to what she chooses to do. A real man owns up to what he chooses to do. He uh, did you see him come out and blame Nia alone? Saying, well, you know, she be on the road too much, man. And that's just stress, man. And this girl was rubbing her breasts up on my arms, man. You know, I'm weak. You know, what was I supposed to do? <laughs> you know? He decided to take responsibility because as a man, that's what you're supposed to do. It's on you. Can't nobody stop you from being a man. But Neil Long is being blamed on social media by all these doggone toxic masculinity fake men. You know, these are boys trying to, they don't know what it's like to be a man. So they just sitting there blaming the woman completely. She's her fault. She ain't putting it out. Trying to be a man. <laughs> it's like, no, she's not trying to be a man. He made a choice to do what he do. But listen to what she talked about the family. Find their relationship for themselves. Like everyone has a different understanding, a different agreement, and you have to do what works for your particular family, especially when you're both working and you have busy schedules. Women are super women, but we also have to recharge our batteries. And um, I've learned, especially in this COVID time, to really examine how I'm balancing my work home life in a different way. You see? Play it again, Sam. To find their relationship for themselves. Like everyone has a different understanding, a different agreement, and you have to do what works for your particular family, especially when you're both working and you have busy schedules. Women are super women but we also have to recharge our batteries. And um, I've learned, especially in this COVID time, to really examine how I'm balancing my work home life in a different way. You see? Like I told you, most of these people that are acting, they don't even make a million dollars a year. Dog, I had more money than than Columbus Short. While he had like three movies out, I was making more money than him. Three movies at the theater. I had more money than than Columbus Short. Hate to name drop him, but I did. He was starring in the movie that was at the theaters. He was paid $50,000 for the movie. And he was the starring actor. Tupac was in Juice. He was paid what fifteen thousand for the movie. Well, I'm not saying <laughs> you didn't know she Nia Long dated. Nah, she dated a lot of people.
Back when she was younger, that's what she did. No, because we recognized beauty back then as beauty. We didn't have to say somebody had to have uh, a 36C or a plastic booty to be beautiful. And nobody had to look like Kim Kardashian to be beautiful back then. A beautiful woman was just a beautiful woman. Beauty is how they carried themselves. She had the low cut, everything. She was just a beautiful girl. So, of course, when we saw Nia Long, we we knew that back then. Now, that was just the 90s. Now, in 2004, it's, ugh, she ain't got no titties. She ain't wearing her ass in. Ugh. You know, we just, we become ignorant. They've dumbed you down to make you believe everybody has to look like a Kardashian. You know, they go to the chop shop to be beautiful. And women are believing that, and they... They pr promote that through Instagram, through all these other different uh, entities to try to make us feel what the word is, unpretty. They look in the mirror and they don't like what they see. No, I, wor I worship people's inner beauty their beauty period believe me there are pretty plenty of women that look like supermodels that are trashy like the most beautiful girls in the world and they just horrible i've seen it like i'm talking about serena williams type thick like and this is like in the 90s or whatever and i was like man i finally dated her and her car was like she was a hoarder and it was bad. Like her, I'm like, she's gorgeous. I'm like, you're way too gorgeous to be living like this. It was terrible. I mean, absolutely terrible. I'm looking at her crib and I'm looking at her house. And I'm looking at her car. It's just trash all through the car. This, it blew my mind. For a woman to be as beautiful as she was, to live like that. I saw another girl, she was petite, you know, just had sh sh her natural hair. She didn't have long hair and all that. Beautiful girl. A lot of people didn't pay attention to her because she wasn't like the other girls and she was out there and she started padding her bra because she wanted to stand out. She was tired of people saying she was bony and didn't have all this stuff. So she used to pad her bra. But she was beautiful. Beautiful girl, but she had that insecurity sink into her brains because people in society are trying to tell her she's not pretty because she don't have these things. And this stuff trickles down and because of social media now, it's in grammar schools. They're teaching, they're thinking about, should we be teaching sexual education in grammar schools? That's how bad it is. Everything in television from cartoons now, everything is like sexually charged. Before, on Saturday mornings and cartoons and all this stuff used to go on, the programming is different. Now Disney and, you know, Disney's tripping. Like, my buddy's like, man, I can't even let them watch Disney no more. And, you know, he's he's like, man, they they can't watch Disney and, and all these other channels, man. They tripping. He's like, I came in and walked in on a show. I'm like, what the hell is this? Is this the channel? Because, you know, when you get kids, you know, you got to get blocks on the TV. They can't watch certain channels, you know, and... So he's fully monitoring what they can watch and what they can't. You know, my family's old school. You know, they don't even let them watch R-rated movies. 
You know, like she she's keeping it old school. Now today, parents just don't give a damn. <laughs> they like they got the internet. They gonna see it anyway. But no, nah. the way my cousin she 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 know how we grew up. She, we had to sneak to watch anything already. <laughs> if somebody said a curse word in there, we couldn't play the we couldn't play hip hop records around our parents. Now these parents, they playing, they listening to it. Eh, 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 eh. You, shoot, you think I could play? I won't play a hip hop record with no curse words in front of my mama today. And I'm super grown. <laughs> that's respect. And that's how a lot of people got by in the day. With due respect, because they respected their family. But most of them, they grew up with the ratchet mama. And, you know, so they like, they ain't going to. If you don't respect your mama and them, you damn sure ain't gonna respect nobody else in the world. Are you kidding me? Dude had a grandma that's 29. 29 year old grandma. She had a baby at 13. She got pregnant at 13, had the baby at 14. And when her daughter was 14 or 15, she had a baby. And all three of them live in the same house. And the mama and the daughter go out talking about they sisters. We sisters. I can't make this up. And what's the common denominator in there? None of the fathers are around. She got pregnant, took care of the baby, baby mama, baby mama, baby mama. So hit the like button, good people. And I hope you guys went on the Patreon and saw the video. Well, we put out the full story on what's going on with the Andoka situation. We'll talk about it probably later on today, but if you want to see it on the Patreon, it is there. That video is out and about. The full story about the affair and what happened, it is already on the Patreon. The Carcino for Life Patreon. If you are a Patreon member, you already got it. You already know what's up. See, it was today, it, which was 21 hours ago. We put it out. This is a very educational video. The Israel, black Israelites teaching you your history. You got real church on Sundays. You had HD come in with the football. I started telling you about the rise of the machines. Part one, you need to see that. Part two is, you thought part one was something, part two gonna blow your mind. That was Carcino and Gilbert Arenas on the stream yard. Uh, ass crack 100 and academics. I had to blow them out. Lamar Odom. Yeah, that can't, that video can't be out here. I think it finally went out. But Gilbert Arenas, how he ripped off American Express and the nightclubs. And then we give you business plans, business information. All of y'all have business ideas. We already have that on display right there on the Patreon. Eight reasons why most business plans fail. So we already got that listed.
Then, of course, the biggest video we got so far this month has been here's what really happened to Ennis Cosby. None of you guys knew the truth until now. So, that was that. Well, we want to start educating people. You know, a lot of these people want you to just come to their channel for content and don't really give you anything that, would you, that you could use in everyday life or things you can learn from. I want to be able to change that. I'd be like, man, you spending your money and time. We got to leave. I'm not going to try to give you a TV. Oh, let's just give them a, a TV. Let's go a $200 giveaway. Okay. You get a $200 gift card. Then what? After your $200 gift card, then what? What's going to happen to you then? You're right back in the same box. And you're only going to pay that back to them anyway. Because you're a member. You know, giveaways are good, but you got I'd rather have some information coming in that's beneficial to me. You know? That's what the Patreon was for, to be able to give you the real without being constructed to conform to these rules that we shouldn't be held down to, right? That was Mia Long talking about... Everybody has to define their relationship for themselves. Like, everyone has a different understanding, a different agreement. And you have to do what works for your particular family, especially when you're both working and you have busy schedules. Women are super women, but we also have to recharge our batteries. And um, I've learned, especially in this COVID time, to really examine how I'm balancing my work home life in a different way. And this is what people don't understand. Why do you want to blame a woman for what another man do? Don't make any sense, fellas. So let's do better by trying to be better. Uh, hopefully all of you guys have subscribed to the page. Nia Long has told you exactly about her relationship, how it, it works, and how actors, period, have to move about. They don't see each other that much. Which basically led to him using that as a weapon to go out to get women and sleep with other women as saying that, you know, we are together, but, you know. We don't really see each other that much, so, you know, I'm allowed to go out. Guys would even lie and say, well, she don't mind what I do if I go out and get a little sum on the side. <laughs> you know, it's, they would do anything they can to fulfill whatever need they need to fill at that moment in time. And look what he done. He's risked his career. He's risked his livelihood. He risked even something worse than that. His name. Now your name is tarnished for the rest of your life. No matter what you do from here on out, you could come out with the cure for cancer. They gonna run this story. They gonna be, he just cured cancer for everybody. But remember when he cheated on Neil Long and his longtime fiance when he was with the Boston Celtics, they're gonna run this into the ground as the story of why we can't have this see when we hire black coaches, they screw everybody. <laughs> you have become the example, and they used you as the example. And for what? A white girl.
So hopefully today we'll be able to get through this whole thing and blow this off the water. I might just go ahead and and let everybody see the real story and go from there. So y'all would know exactly the pieces that's in this story and what happened. I might do it, but everybody on the Patreon is loving it on the Patreon, you know. They're learning the whole story. Why is it publicized? Because of Robert Solver. Robert Solver and Brett Favre are in a bad situation. And they're making it look real bad right now. And the NBA needed this to be publicized and promoted. Because what they call it is media sexy. What Robert Solver did isn't sexy. It's like, oh my God, we can't talk about it. It's so ugly, we can't talk about it. But this, oh, they can talk about it. Black man, white woman, talk about that all day long. That's going to be the storyline. Meanwhile, these acts have been done throughout the entire NBA. Oh, thankful for it. They do it all the time. They do it all the time. Whenever, whenever someone white gets in trouble, here comes the mess. You remember when Don Sterling got into it? What happened? Someone, someone black has to go. Have you noticed there's always a black head coach on the most racist <laughs> guys that get caught? They got a black head coach because they're trying to disguise the fact that they're racist. But Sauber has so much money, just like Sterling got so much money. They like they racist. They old. They don't care. They like I got too much money to care. I don't have to dodge around and dance around feelings, but now you've embarrassed a man with money. So now all of these situations are going to get magnified through the media. They're going to get blown up. They're going to be drug out and no one's talking about Robert Solver. Robert Solver, if he was a black owner, let's say Michael Jordan did what he did, right? Michael Jordan would be forced to sell the team. I told people that. They wouldn't have given him no year suspension. Uh, they don't care. Michael Jordan would have been forced to sell that team. Right? And they would have had it that way. Michael Jordan wouldn't have been able to make an announcement saying, I've decided to sell the team. No, that, no. It would have been, the NBA has made a decision. Michael Jordan is banned from the NBA. Yeah, it would have been like that. They would have set an example of him. Robert Sauber was allowed to face a one-year suspension, a fine, and then he decided to make a decision to sell his teams so he could save face. And before anybody could even talk about it or do any more stories about it, here we come with this. Don Imus called the women the nappy head hoes, right? At Rutgers, the female basketball team. He called them nappy head hoes. Then they got mad about him and wanted him off the air for doing that, disrespecting these black young women. Then he struck back, right? All of a sudden it was, what about the rappers? Then it became a rapper movement. So in the NCAA, the NAACP rather, sorry about that. The NAACP got involved and decided to have a funeral for the N-word and bury it. Like we, we 
They actually physically went out there and dug a hole, took the word, and threw it in a ditch and buried it. We buried the word. That's it. It is buried now. That word is gone. Grown people actually did that. All because they let other people dictate to you what you can do and what you can't do. Now, let's say Michael Vick did what Brett Favre did. What would have happened to Michael Vick? Michael Vick would be incarcerated right now while the investigation is going on. He would have had to bond out of jail while, while they're still figuring out an investigation. His name drug all through the mud. But they got text messages, all the evidence they need to link to a corrupt individual system when Jackson, Mississippi is got nothing but brown, dirty water. The country is... I mean, the, the state is one of the poorest states in the United States of America. And you got the man with $140 million living in the state wants to still use government money. And use every tactic he can use to use your money, not his. He would be under the jail. And because we know that, and we know it to be fact, and it's normal to us, that's the problem. Is It happens so much, and in so many ways, we become normal to the situation of prejudice and racism, blatant racism. Brett Favre never seen anything wrong. He's a conservative. He's, he's moving like a conservative person would move. Well, that's the thing. It wouldn't be this investigation. The investigation is trying to find a way to keep Brett Favre name clean and how they can fix this without nobody going to jail and damaging Brett Favre. That's what they're trying to do. That's what the whole investigation is supposed to be about. But now it's out of the media's attention because this Endoka situation is not going to change. Yeah. Well, when you when you see um, when you see injustice in the world, you want what justice when you start to see things that don't make sense, you want to know an answer why. And when people want to know why and people start asking questions, you know what they do? 
they change the questions. Because there's so much going on in the world, they come up with a whole new distraction. And they throw that at you. Bam. Now, you're looking at the left hand and not the right hand anymore. You was focused on the right hand. Now, you forgot about the right hand. You're looking at what's going on with the left hand. Then, while you focus on the left hand, the right hand then threw away what was in it and grabbed something else. And then it's going to come with that. Next thing you know, you forgot all about all the things you were mad at. Do anybody remember what happened when Donald Sterling had to sell the team? What happened after that? That black people saw. Us as blacks, what do we see? Donald Sterling was forced to sell the team. They made a decision. Donald Sterling had to go. No owner could do what he did and say the things he did and say it on tape. He had to go. So it was immediately, right? Z row tolerance. Immediately. He put those tapes out. He was forced to sell the team. Everyone else was cheering and jumping off for joy. Now there's nothing else to be done, right? Clippers got a billionaire owner to come in. What happened to America? Well, not America, but what happened after that? They crowned Adam Silver as a man that took care of things and took care of business, right? He was the man. Until they finally saw the real him. Because the commissioner only cares about and only runs with the facts of what he know and what he's learned. Somebody said Mike Brown. Can you explain what happened with Mike Brown? I don't know what happened with Mike Brown. No, I'm going to tell you what happened. Here's what happened in that situation so that you guys would never, ever 
forget that this thing went down. See, the league knew about Robert Sarver and did it nothing. As I told y'all before, David Stern made money off of Robert Sarver. They made money off of him. So if you make money off of these guys, you understand the scenarios of what was going on. They made money off the guy. It wasn't a long time ago. It was only eight years ago, really, when this went down. Like I told you, he ain't been commissioner long. David Stern was, he was there in the NBA since the 90s, but he wasn't a commissioner until 2014. Adam Silver just really got here. So y'all don't really know him yet, but like I told you, I know Adam Silver. So I know what he, he what he was and what he used to do. And he's not a, a litigator at all. He's not the tough go after anybody. That's why the NBA is where it is now. David Stern was a man who understood basketball. He knew not to alter the game too much. He had respect for the game. David Stern could tell you plays. Adam Silver is not made to do that. He's somebody who come up with ideas for charity functions. That was his claim to the whole NBA. He had connections with all these different groups so he could bring in money from here. We could have a, a, a hope drive and all. that. That's Adam Silver. So he's never been this guy that everybody thought he was. So, but as soon as he took the job, the first thing he had to do as commissioner was deal with uh, Donald Sterling. Donald Sterling used to be the bank of the NBA. When other teams had money, didn't have any money, they would go and get a loan from Donald Sterling so they can cre uh, complete a deal. That's what used to happen with Donald Sterling. So they knew what he was, they just, they had no choice but to put up with him because he had legitimate money. He wasn't in an investment group. He owned that team outright because he had money. Now, everybody else, you know, it was different. Then the Jordan era came and built the whole league into billionaires and took it to the billions. The NBA. They were self-sufficient. They didn't need him anymore. But they couldn't get rid of him until he got rid of himself. That video made it to where he had to sell the team. He was pissed, but he had to sell the team. And now that girl who leaked that damn tape Who caused that billion dollar transaction? Is she still living? Now, everybody don't understand that uh, the world moves mysteriously. And if you're not careful, you're going to see the ugly part of it. Shouts out to at Kwame Brown Bus Life. Don't forget to subscribe to him as you should subscribe here. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss anything when we go live and start hitting you with the truth and all the facts.
Well, people, you got to realize uh, there is a whole mirage that was going on at that time. Donald Sterling, his ruling and him being removed made the NBA start cracking down on players, uh, managers. There was a zero tolerance for them. And it was like, well, wait a minute. <laughs> Why is the rules changing for us now? Because he got caught doing something. Now there's zero tolerance around the board. So they say. Then they come with this nonsense, right? No. <laughs> I found that to be very interesting. No, it's a lot of people that felt like the situations had consequences. Like, if you look at the game now, it's entirely different than what it was three, four years ago. You just wouldn't know because it, the changes were so small. They keep making changes to the rules. They keep making changes to the game. We need a Patreon on the on the Sterling girl. Um, I might go looking into it to see what happened to it, but it is what it is. I never really had a what you would call a connection to all of those things that everyone else did. You know, um, no, nothing really, because beforehand it was so much of this stuff going on throughout the NBA that no one really cared anyway. You know, no one cared what anybody was doing or saying or moving or what have you. Uh, yes, I am aware there's a black dot <laughs> that appears on there. That's not something I can wi wipe off. That is a crack within the camera itself. So I'm gonna have to get a new phone eventually. My thing is I just don't go get one. <laughs> It's like, he's too lazy to go get a new phone. Me, I don't like grabbing new phones. When they, like, my mom and them, they grab a new phone, like, every year. Why? I have no idea they do that stuff. To me, I think it's retarded to grab a new phone every damn year. Um, what's his name said it? Jerry West. Uh, Jerry West wasn't a big Michael Jordan fan. 
at all. Uh, he 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 saw his game and said, "Man, this guy is an extraordinary talent." But he grew up. Well, he didn't grow up, but he played with <laughs> Wilt Chamberlain and Bill Russell, and watching what they could do. You know, that he would never put Michael Jordan above Bill. And changing the game was something entirely different for them. You know what I'm saying? why certain people move in the way that they do. I can just say people have their own views on how they chose to move and make the decisions that they did. You look at Dale Demps right now. Dale Demps is, is out the NBA because he didn't play ball and do what the NBA wanted him to do. He did not come in and commit to the trading all of the players that the Lakers wanted to do. And they leaked the trade out to the public. And Dale Demps did that. It just, it shocked the world and it rocked the Lakers team because they all rebelled and went up against LeBron, who's supposed to be their boy, but he's trying to trade them behind their back. So, No, I didn't I didn't go through all that. It was it was only so much someone could really do. The league right now is such propaganda BS. The NBA is in a whole different state right now because of these rules. The Donald Sterling, the no tolerance, and all of these different things. The NBA has stayed out of this issue. Have you noticed that? The NBA has not made one comment about M.A. Udoka. The NBA, Donald Sterl, I mean, Adam Silver even done a press conference to talk about this. I told you why. The NBA is not getting involved for a very simple reason. The NBA is not getting involved because they want the Celtics to clean up their own mess. They said, you guys knew, didn't it? It was an investigation going on for over a month. When you guys found out the whole thing, you tried to keep it in house and y'all made a mess of things. Now you want us to come out and clean it up for you. That's what you want us to do. You want us to do your job. And the NBA is like, nah, you do your own job.
Uh, they they did a lot of things uh, that was different. There was uh, an executive after that that was dating one of the staff members. That's how she got hired. He was a married man, but he was a general manager of the team. So what did it matter? She never complained. He never complained. But they forced another black woman. They forced another black woman out of her job so that they can employ this other woman to be in there. Nobody cared about that. It was never reported. It was swept under the rug. And there's nothing she could do about it. She moved on because there was no need for her to even complain about it. You see what I'm saying? It's not yapping, it's the truth. They didn't telling you people don't care these days about anything except for their own self, you know, indulgence. Mm-hmm. That's Adam Silver. Adam Silver is exactly what LeBron them want. Um, they tried to do it the Adam Silver way. And the Adam Silver way is to basically, you know, to create stories. And that's what LeBron's about. He's, he's an actor in the script. And he sails right in. But come on, let's stop. They have not loved or took care of anybody black in these uh, organizations. Right? They don't care. Uh, well, it was about six, seven months ago people were doing that, but I never cared or gave a thought about all of the false, false propaganda that they'd use to, to promote LeBron James or any of these other athletes. 
Because at the end of the day, when you look at it, none of these guys are going to stand the test of time. And when we talk later on today, we're going to exploit a lot of things that have went under the radar that most of y'all have not even known about or didn't even discover. When we put, we're going to put the whole piece of the puzzle together for you so you can know about the M.A. Udoka situation so you won't have to be getting fed pieces of the puzzle every day. Giannis is the NBA's guy. They like him because he's going to do what the NBA wants to do. The NBA wants this new era. LeBron is crippling basketball teams and ruining the owners with all this woke message. And we're following this, this message of leadership and all this. They followed LeBron's plan since 2014 when Adam Silver came in. He basically took over where Stern left off with LeBron. Stern already knew LeBron's was a was a, a end game to LeBron. Stern, I mean, Silver decided to ride LeBron all the way to the end. Way beyond his time. Where Adam Silver would have said, okay, it's time to get off the LeBron train. He had LeBron play the Golden State Warriors in four straight NBA Finals. Four straight. 2015 all the way 2016, 17, and 18. Four years straight since he was commissioner. He had Golden State and the Lakers. I mean, not the Lakers, but... LeBron and the Cleveland Cavaliers, they played four straight times. That's something David Stern would have never done and never allowed because you kill your league doing that. But he wants to get his recognition going by keeping them in there. They're the two biggest teams in the league. Let them play each other every year. You kill your playoffs, you kill your growth. You don't do that. Then when he had Magic and Bird, sure, I would have put Magic and Bird in every NBA Finals if I could. But that kills your league. Magic got to play against another team in the NBA Finals. Larry got to play against another team in the NBA Finals. Then... We'll have them play in the NBA Finals. Then the next year, there'll be somebody else playing in the NBA Finals. Or we might do two back-to-back, -back, but never, never like that. Three in a row? Who does that? <laughs> if I've seen the same movie three times in a row, about a fourth time, I ain't going to be interested. And then I ain't going to be interested to see it again. I'm going to get disinterested real fast. Now, what Adam Silver got as his last advice from David Stern, when Steph Curry came into the picture and the Golden State Warriors were doing what they were doing, y'all don't even realize how good the Golden State Warriors were before Kevin Durant came in. The way they were playing the game, other teams couldn't keep up. They were beating teams by 20 points a game on an average. They averaged 20 points beatdowns. These games weren't even close. It was to the point Steph Curry won MVP and was basically the best player in the game at this time. And he was playing three quarters. 
they would sit him down in the fourth quarters. The numbers would have been insane. He sat down, he set out 17 fourth quarters. That's an NBA record. 17 fourth quarters he sat out because they didn't even need him. No, they're woke-ish because everything is fake woke. They're not really woke because if they were really woke, they would walk off the court. All the players would walk off the court right now if they were really woke. They'll stop right what they're doing and walk right off the court and say, we got to reinvent how we finna do this but moving forward. And he's like, what? If we're not, we're not going to shake up this whole thing and reinvent how we're doing it now, then you might as well get a whole bunch of white guys and, and Europeans and then call it the NBA and y'all go ahead and play it and we figure out what we're going to do somewhere else. If everybody was woke. Because there's no way Michael Jordan could turn this league into a billion dollar industry and believe me, he did. One man turned this thing into a billion dollar industry. And it was him. I don't like him as a player, rooted against him, but I cannot take away what he did. And that is it, the truth. Michael Jordan made this a billion dollar lead. People that's let me down, Jamel Hill. She drunk the whole woke Kool-Aid. Uh, and because they took her, they kept her job when she was gonna get fired at ESPN. ESPN was gonna fire her. But LeBron and all these other people spoke up for her, all this wake media, woke media. And now she feels like she's gotta be woke forever. This woke-ish. It's always zero tolerance, right? But has Skip Bayless ever been fired for many women that then came and complained about him from Carrie Champion on down? Every time he gets a female moderator, right? He gets a female moderator, what happened? They run up out of there. And when Jen got into it, she just, Jenny flipped out. She does not like Skip Bayless. And that was that.
No. That is completely untrue. Oh, definitely hit the like button and subscribe to the page. Why does Nia Long's why does Nia Long's um, past history, what does that have to do? Like, why come when someone cheats, somebody brings up, uh, they bring up uh, someone's sexual history. So before she met her fiance, so before she met her fiance, she went ahead and okay, she before she met her fiance, she went ahead and actually Okay, she had a life before him. I'm quite sure M.A. Udoka was sleeping with a bunch of chicks before he met his wife. So now why come when he get caught in an affair, what's all she did got to do with it? What that got to do with it? Now we talking about, oh man, she dated, I ain't know she dated that dude, the rock star Mick Jagger. Mick Jagger done slept with about a billion women. No. People don't never understand things, you know, and they start to speculate. And when people start to speculate, they make matters worse. Now, ESPN, they're sitting there talking about, you know, uh, uh, and what happens in the house and everything else. Stephen A. Smith told the truth for the first time in his life. And why did he tell the truth? It's because... He was in a scenario, in a situation where he wasn't, he wasn't used to being in. For the first time ever in his life, he was in a situation he wasn't accustomed to being in. He knows this procedure. He just saw Jalen Rose and Molly date while being on the job and all of these different things. And he was drugged through the mud for being the one that was sleeping around with Molly. And I was the one that had to tell people that's ridiculous. Molly's not doing that. They are separated for different reasons. It has nothing to do with cheating and all this stuff. But we as black people, we only see sex as the reason people get divorced. Oh man, he must have cheated. <laughs> we can't see. Uh, thanks, Bill. As long as y'all keep super chatting me, I will be able to keep my independence. They don't want me to keep my independence. I'll tell you that.
Because I could have sold my independence like academics did and been in a big mess right, right now as we speak. I know, people don't know what all I went through. When I went and made the video about Molly and Stephen A. Smith and Jalen Rose and all that, and when I did that, I had like 300,000 views off one video. I had 100,000 views off Stephen A. Smith responding back to the situation. I was sitting there making videos off of this and reporting on it. And people didn't say a word. What's up, Ronaldo? Thanks for the support, man. Thank you. I appreciate that. Everybody who hit up the super chat. What isn't true, Kobe Town? Oh, what's that? No, that's Motown. What What did you say that's uh, not true? What isn't true, sir? I'm the best person to give relationship advice because I'm someone that didn't been in a lot of them. <laughs> I could tell you all about relationships. Some people think the best people to tell you about a marriage is people that's in a marriage. It's not necessarily true because the people that's in a marriage, they're going to tell you, they're going to tell you what they're allowed to tell you because they never can tell you how they truly feel because they're in it. <laughs> They ain't going to be like, and it, it is what it is. It's a marriage. <laughs> so they, they really can't give you any advice because they can't even tell you anything, period. We still haven't heard from Motown 20 since he said that statement. All right, married people tell you what it is because they're married. They actually want other people to be married so they could be just as miserable as you, but they actually wish they was single again. <laughs> After a couple of years of being married, they'd be, man, you get to do what you want, not for the, not for the reasons you think. They look at you like, dude, you get to do whatever you want to do when you want to do it. <laughs> it's like, yeah. You got total freedom. I'm like, yeah. See, most people get married because they can't afford to live the life that they're living without the wife or without the husband or the joint revenue. So it's like having a roommate. It's like, I can't afford to be on my own. If I'm on my own, I'm going to have half of this. <laughs> I'll be living in a hut. But sometimes they would rather live with... I, I've heard people say, oh, man, I go live with my moms in a heartbeat <laughs> if I could start over. If I do that, that'll have to be on the Patreon.
Uh, no, not really. Um, Stalling on what? I can't. Somebody just said stalling. I'm like, stalling for what? Moving from the West Coast to the Midwest. Any advice? Dress warm. <laughs> Dress warm. You are in for a shock when it comes to your Januaries and Februaries. Well, Marches will never be the same again. I can guarantee you that, buddy. Dress warm. It's just starting to turn now for us. October is when it starts to really turn here. When it starts getting cool. And it's starting already. And in November, December, January, February, it, it starts to come down, down, down. That's because the internet the internet makes these decisions. They are the ones that uh, Yeah, the internet make those decisions. Well, that's because we were taught nothing but negativity. I'm serious. They taught us, we were taught nothing but negativity. The whole nine. I know, right? We was taught nothing but negativity. We were taught athleticism and our natural ability. That's what our top market is um, to go to becoming millionaires. We are, our thing has been sexuality and that's it. That's what we know for our sexuality and our athletic ability. That's it.
I know. It gets crazier. Because it makes sense to them to be able to do what they do. That's what they want to show. Black couple going through problems because the black man want to chase the white girl. That's the image they want to send to the rest of the world. So that's why this, this whole situation is going to be portrayed and pushed throughout generations. I stayed on this live stream long enough just to be able to speak with you. Yeah, somebody just did something. So don't forget to go on the Patreon, see what was really going on. What's up, Nicholas Jacobs? I see he just hit. Some people are just now waking up. We're going to be getting some things cooking. Hit the like button while you're here so the people know you're not a bot. Trust me, we know there's so many secrets in the NBA. Ooh, he hit me with a shallow one. Oh my goodness, boy, you are really, a, you must be really getting it in. It's my Israelite brother there. Shalom, Ak. Yeah, we had a big Israelite Sunday education for the whole world on the Patreon. They wasn't ready for that. They weren't, re they weren't ready for real development. Well, the thing is, they always look at us as we're always the people that's the joke. We're always the people that are the ones that's pushed to the side. We're always the ones that are looked at under the microscope, it's like we're on display. Our athleticism, our... Right, people don't realize you can make money without being a professional athlete. Kobe Bryant, because he was Kobe Bryant, playing as a professional athlete is what he dreamed of doing his entire life. But after he got out, he made more money than he did 
playing in the NBA. Michael Jordan, the money he made playing in the NBA or being an NBA basketball player, his salary was dramatically lower than what he earned. So he only made like $100 million. So it paved the way for the LeBrons to make $300 million or a billion, gross a billion dollars in salary or whatever. No, LeBron isn't a billionaire. That's a lie. What he did was actually based on if you add up all his salary, he has a billion dollars. He's gross that. And that's not even a story. That's so far from the truth. It's just he has a lot of money. But my thing is, it don't make you look like you're big. So why have your team put the false narrative out there? You know, it's it's goofy at this point. Right? Mm-hmm. Neil Long, she probably made more money than Ndoka himself, actually. She actually had a successful career to open up to other avenues. That's what I'm saying. That She's made more money not talking about off her movies. I'm talking about from endorsements, from fashion lines. And everything else. That's where the real money is. Um, somebody told them that's totally, uh, cap. All kind of lies that are being told right now that he planned on leaving Nia alone to go start another family with another woman is completely, completely not the case. Trust me, that is the new lie. Every day there's been a new lie that has been told. And it's like, I got to come in here and put out these fires. But let me tell you right now, you're going to see that lie pop up. That she was getting ready to leave. It's not the truth.
Absolutely. That's the new lie. He was getting ready to leave her. Such a lie. He was not getting ready to leave her. She was getting ready to change her life. She just moved to Boston permanently to make a home and residence in Boston. So she didn't come all the way up to Boston so that she can get a house there and everything else and start her life and uproot her, her life out there in Boston just so, cause he was getting ready to leave her. It's so false. Um, yesterday I had to tell you, no player is the reason for all of this. There was no player to come forward to say any of it. It's a lie. Um, I don't know who camp saying what or how they know it was her camp. It's no player. No, it wasn't that. So I'm going to get out of here. And get my day on the track. Yeah, but I told you, they will keep continuously coming up with new lies every day to keep stuff going. So that's going to be the new lie. He was going to leave her. You know, it's just every day, new lies. Every day, more lies. <laughs> Deception. So I look forward to seeing y'all on the Carcino for Life Patreon. I'm out.